Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to show that this equation has a root, aka an answer to this right here, on the interval 1, 2. And here is the deal. Notice that this equation is equal to 0 already, so let me just take this to be defined to be my function f. So I'm going to just go ahead, here's my solution. Starting by let the function be that x to the fourth power plus x minus 3. And if this equation wasn't equal to 0, then of course we can just move the things on the right-hand side to the left and then define the left-hand side to be the function, right? So I'm going to define this to be the function. And I will have to tell you guys that, you see, this is just a polynomial, right? And the best thing that you can remember is that there's no fraction, right? there's no denominator, there's no square root, there's nothing that will bother you. So you're just going to say that this is the function which is continuous on this interval 1, 2. And of course for the endpoint, sometimes people put a uh, square bracket to include the endpoints. In this case, it doesn't really matter because this right here is in fact continuous everywhere. There's no fraction, no square root, right? Just a polynomial. So here we have this continuous function right here. Then we check. the endpoints of this interval. So I'm just going to plug in 1 into this function first. We are going to check f of 1, and we have to see what does this equal to. And let's just go ahead and do the math, right? <laughs> All right, so plugging 1, so we have 1 to the fourth power plus 1 and then minus 3. This is just 1 plus 1 and then minus 3, so you get negative 1. And you have to indicate that this right here is less than zero, right? It's a negative number. And we also check f of 2. And we do the same thing. You plug in 2 into x, so you have 2 to the fourth power and then plus 2, and then minus 3. This is 16 plus 2 is 18, and then minus 3 is 15. And most importantly, 15 is positive, right? So here's the deal. You have a continuous function. Let me just Make a sketch real quick. 1 and 2 right here. When x is equal to 1, the y value is negative 1. So it's down here maybe. And when x is 2, the y value is 15. So maybe it's up here, right? And now, is it possible for us to go from this point to that point without crossing the x-axis? Well, can we do this? No, right? So. <laughs> we must be able to cross the x-axis somewhere in between for 1 and 2. And we can be sure why this is the case. It's because the function is continuous, right? So with this being done, we can say that we conclude by the intermediate value theorem, right? There has to be an answer. We'll just say there is a root. Um, this interval, right? And that's pretty much it. I don't need to put this down. Yeah. And of course, this is just an interval with length 1. And if you want to narrow things down, you can maybe check f of 1.5, and then you see if it's positive or negative. So you can kind of narrow things down, narrow the interval down. But this is just a quick exercise to see how to show that this function is equal to 0, that this equation has a root on a certain interval. And this is all you have to do. And most importantly, you have to quote that the function is continuous. Right? You can just say it's a polynomial or whatever, depending on how much detail you have to provide. But I think this is pretty, pretty clear. That's it.